this video we will see a problem on calculation of moment of inertia for a t section here is the question it is given that a t section has the following dimensions flange 200 mm into 20 mm web 20 mm into 200 mm overall depth is 220 mm we have to find ixx and iyy it means here in this data first i'll mention that it is a t section in which the flange is having the dimension as 200 into 20 so i'll write down flange is equal to 200 mm into 20 mm next web is 20 mm into 200 mm and the overall depth is 220 220 mm find ixx and iyy so here the question is we have to calculate ixx that is moment of inertia about xx axis and iyy that is moment of inertia about yy axis so this is the question we have in front of us now with the data available let us try to get the solution to this problem now in the solution part first i'll draw the t section and for that i'll draw an axis system here we have x and y axis So here is the T section and as it is mentioned now flange is having the dimension of 200 into 20. So this topmost portion it is the flange and it has a width of 20 mm a width is 200. So here the width of the flange is 200 mm then its height is 20 mm or you can say the depth is 20 next web it is 20 mm into 200 mm so the width of the web which is the central portion is 20 mm by 200 mm And it is given that the overall depth is 220 mm. So if we add 220, the overall depth becomes 220 mm. So this diagram is correct. Now we have to find out the moment of inertia about x axis and y axis for the given T section. And for that purpose, first we should know where is the centroid located for this T section. Now if I see this, this T section is symmetric about the vertical axis. Or I can say the y axis. T section is symmetric about this y axis. So the distance of this y axis from the y axis of the system, this distance would be called as x bar. And I'll write it in this way that since the given T section is symmetric about y axis so therefore i'll write down x bar will be it will be exactly half of 200 that is the total width so it comes out to be 100 mm x bar is 100 mm now once we know x bar we can say that centroid is located on this y axis but at which height that we do not know and for that we require y bar so here i'll write down now since the location of centroid with respect to x axis is given by the location with respect to x axis is called as y bar and that will be a1 into y1 plus a2 into y2 upon area 1 plus area 2 
I'll highlight this and keep it as equation number one. Now I'll divide this figure that is the T section into two rectangles. This one will become the first rectangle for us and here we have the second rectangle. So now I'll calculate the area of the respective rectangles. So therefore I'll say area one will be equal to so the first rectangle it has width 20 and height is 200 so it is 20 into 200 that gives me the answer as 4 into 10 raised to 3 mm square then y1 y1 is the x-axis for the first rectangle its height is 200 so x-axis will lie at half of 200 so y1 will be 200 divided by 2 that is equal to 100 mm then area 2 it will be equal to 200 into 20 again this also comes out to be 4 into 10 raised to 3 mm square and y2 value will be y2 is the x axis for the second rectangle and it will be located at 200 plus half of 20 because the section 2 the rectangle 2 is at a distance of 200 mm from the x axis so it is 200 plus half of 20 that is the location of x axis for the second rectangle and this value it comes out to be 210 mm now after this i'll say that therefore put all values in equation number one and after putting all values we get y bar as it was area 1 area 1 is 4 into 10 raised to 3 into y1 that is 100 plus area 2 4 into 10 raised to 3 into y2 that is 210 upon area 1 plus area 2 so here i will get the answer of y bar it comes out to be 155 mm and as we have taken all the references from bottom x axis so this 155 mm it is from bottom similarly i can get y bar from top as well so that will be from the total height that is 220 i will subtract 155 so 220 minus 155 that gives me 65 mm from top so now i can locate the y axis and it is at a distance of 155 mm from bottom this is the x axis and its location is given by y bar is equal to 155 mm from bottom and from the top it is 65 mm so here i have located the x axis y axis was located and here we have the centroid of the given t section so now once we have located the centroid now we can easily calculate the moment of inertia first about x axis then about y axis i'll say that therefore mi that is moment of inertia about horizontal xx axis is given by ixx is equal to ixx1 plus ixx2 keeping this as equation number second now as we have two different areas so the total moment of inertia about xx axis will be ixx1 that is the mi of first section about the x axis then mi of the second section about the x axis so now i'll say that after this therefore ixx1 will be given by ig1 or i can say it is ig1 plus area 1 into h1 square and why i am using this it is called as by parallel axis theorem so therefore 
ix x1 will be equal to ig1 now ig1 is as we can see from the diagram the x axis for the complete t section is at 155 mm from bottom but the x axis for rectangle number 1 rectangle 1 is having a height of 200 so its x axis will be passing through exactly half of its height that is 100 mm we can say from bottom so now it means here there is the difference between the x axis of the t section and of rectangle number 1 and this distance is nothing but h1 so it will be 155 minus 100 so here i'll say first ig1 ig1 is the moment of inertia formula about x axis which is vd cube by 12 plus area 1 is b into d and h1 h1 will be 155 minus 100 whole square so therefore ix x1 will be equal to now b and d values for the rectangle number 1 b is 20 d is 200 so 20 into 200 cube divided by 12 plus b into d the area was 4 into 10 raised to 3 and this will be 55 whole square now after the calculation of this complete term i'll get my answer of ix x1 which is 25.43 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this is ix x1 the moment of inertia for the first rectangle about the xx axis of the t section now in the same manner i'll calculate ix62 and that is ig2 plus area 2 into h2 square i'll say that this is by parallel axis theorem so therefore ix62 will be now ig2 ig2 is again since we are calculating about x axis so mi about x axis that is bd cube by 12 plus area is b into d now h2 if we see in this diagram the x axis of complete t section is located at 65 mm from top but the x axis of rectangle number 2 it is located at a distance of we can say half of 20 that is 10 mm from top so here there is some difference between these two axes and this distance is nothing but h2 so here while writing h2 i'll say that it will be 65 minus this distance which is nothing but half of 20 that is 10 mm so from 65 if we subtract 10 we are going to get h2 so 65 minus i'll write down half of 20 which is 10 whole square so therefore ix62 will be equal to now b and d values for the rectangle second b is 200 d is 20 so 200 into 20 cube divided by 12 plus area is 4 into 10 raised to 3 this will be 65 minus 10 whole square so on calculating the entire term here my answer of ix62 that comes out to be it is 12.23 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 after getting ix61 and ix62 i'll say that putting those values in equation number second so i'll put the values here so therefore put ix61 and ix62 in equation number second so here we have ix6 is equal to now ix61 was 25.43 into 10 raised to 6 plus ix62 12.23 into 10 raised to 6 so therefore ix6 value it comes out to be 37.66 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this is the first answer now the second part here we have to even calculate i y y so i'll write down therefore m i about vertical 
centroidal axis that is y axis is given by i y y will be equal to i y y 1 plus i y y 2 so therefore i y y will be equal to now if we see the moment of inertia about the vertical axis for that case now it is very interesting here that the y axis of complete t section passes at 100 mm from we can say the y axis which is the reference here next the y axis for rectangle number 1 will also be passing through this 100 mm distance similarly for rectangle 2 also it will be at 100 mm distance it means all the y axis they are passing through the same line so there is no parallel distance between the two axis and it can be solved without parallel axis theorem so directly i can apply the formula i y y is db cube by 12 for the first rectangle i y y 2 is db cube by 12 for the second rectangle so therefore i y y will be equal to now d and b values for the first rectangle d is 200 b is 20 so 200 into 20 cube divided by 12 plus for the second rectangle we have d s 20 b s 200 on calculation i'll get my answer of i y y as 13.47 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so here is the second answer so as we see the question there were two things asked ix6 and iyy ix6 value we have calculated it was 37.66 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this first question is solved next for iyy we have got the answer as 13.47 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 iyy and while finding both the answers we can say that the problem has been completed.